Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. Cletus is looking a little bit sick. Um, this is episode number six of Eek! The Electrical Engineering Class. Um, I want to talk about uh, two things in particular. One is RMS voltage and current values and why we use them. And the other is watts versus uh, volt amperes, W versus VA. The two are kind of related. So, okay, if you have uh, a circuit that's like direct current, you've got, say, like 12 volts, right? Say it's like a car battery and it's 12 volts and your circuit is drawing 2 amps. So in order to calculate power, you do P equals VI, power equals voltage times current. So you just say power equals 12 volts times 2 amps 12 times 2 is 24, it consumes 24 watts, right? But what about AC? Uh, in earlier eek, eek videos, I explained current and direct current and alternating current and all this stuff, uh, but I didn't go into very much detail, and so, uh, as you recall, alternating current is basically changing directions uh, 100 times a second if it's 50 hertz 120 times a second if it's 60 hertz the current kind of goes like this faster and faster and then it slows down and then it reverses direction and then keeps going like that right so because the voltage is constantly changing in the form of a sine wave then as the voltage goes up and goes down the current will also go up and go down so over time you have a constantly changing voltage and a constantly changing current so how can you just multiply volts times amps and get watts? And yet that's what everybody does, right? So how does it actually work? The deal is that P equals VI. P equals V times I. For DC, it just works, right? Okay, well, how does it work for AC? Well, it works for AC if you do P equals V RMS times I RMS. Well, what the heck is RMS? RMS is root mean square. And what that means is, yeah, let's just draw a picture because it'll make it a lot easier to understand. So if we have a graph here, let's draw it over here. We have um, this is time and this is voltage, right? Okay, so let's draw a pretty a pretty sine wave, as pretty as I can make it. There's our sine wave, and of course it, it carries on and repeats forever. So right, if in our DC example, we had 12 volts and 2 amps, right? But that's DC. So what if we have 12 volts AC? How does that actually work? Well, what you need to do, the, the, the trick here, is that whenever you're given a value like 12 volts AC, or 120 volts AC, or 230 volts AC, those values are actually RMS. What RMS actually means is that the value 12 volts, the peak here, the peak of this sine wave is not actually 12 volts. If it's 12 volts AC, the peak of your sine wave right here, that's not 12 volts. For 12 volts AC, the peak is actually about 17 volts. 12 volts is actually right about here. So well, what the heck is going on there? I mean, everybody thinks that if it's AC, that it peaks at 12, and no, 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 it peaks at 17. So 16.9 actually, but whatever. So like, okay, what what the heck's going on there? So. The deal is you want to use RMS values, and the reason is because this is 12 volts AC, and it's peaking at 17 volts, right? And we notice I drew 12 volts there. Well, if you drew your DC 
voltage on here. That's DC, because as time goes on, your voltage stays at 12 volts, right? So this 12 volt DC is equivalent to this 12 volt AC that peaks at 17 volts. Okay, so why does it why does it peak at 17 volts and why do we call this 12 volts RMS and yet the peak is 17? Like what gives? So what we need to do is this is a sine wave and obviously um, <clears throat> if you look at this mathematically you'd say oh well the average is zero because the area up here is equal to the area down here so it just it adds up to zero right? No because here the voltage is increasing and the current increases along with it and then it drops back down. When it gets to zero and goes this way, all that means is that your current is flowing in the opposite direction. But your gizmo is still actually doing work. It's still actually using that juice to do work. So what we do is we just take this chunk, that chunk right there of our sine wave, and we draw another graph because everyone loves graphs, right? We draw another graph and this is the first half of the sine wave, right? To calculate RMS, what you're going to do is you're going to divide this into equal sections. Oh dear, what did I do with my cap? There we go. You divide that into equal sections. So we'll divide it like, say, in the center, and then we'll do one here, and we'll do one here, and we'll do one here, and one here, and then we'll do a short one right here. So what you're actually doing is measuring these points on the waveform. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. So we'll call these like A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, right? Okay, so the root mean square is each of these values, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you square them. A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus D squared plus E squared plus F squared plus G squared. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven values. You square each of them. Then if you want, that's the square part of, you have root mean square. Okay. We just did the square part by squaring each of those values. Now you want to do the mean part. Well, how do you do the mean? Well, you have seven values, so you divide that by the number of values, seven. That's the mean part. That will give you the mean of the squares of these values. But now you need to, the, the root, which is the square root of the average of the squared values. So all you do is you take the square root of that whole thing. And that is RMS. Ta-da! So it turns out that for a pure sine wave, you can simply write the RMS voltage is equal to the peak voltage divided by the square root of 2. But that actually simplifies to the RMS equals peak voltage times 0 0.707. Or you can say the peak voltage equals the RMS over 0 0.707. Ta-da! And that's how we got our 12 and 17. The whole idea here <clears throat> is that we need some kind of value. Even though it's peaking at 17, blah blah blah, the RMS value is used such that when you're actually doing power calculations, i.e. P equals VI, <clears throat> this 12 volts AC, by using the RMS value, it essentially becomes equivalent to 12 volts DC. So you can simply do P equals VI. Okay, so what this means is that when we talk about 120 volts AC, the peak of the sine wave of the AC is not 120 volts. The peak is actually 120 divided by 0.707 which is 170 volts. In Europe, the voltage is 230 volts. The peak voltage of the sine wave in Europe at 230 volts is actually 325 volts. But the whole reason that we use these values, we say 120 volts AC, 230 volts AC, 
those are RMS values. And usually when these voltage or current values are given, they are very often RMS values. And the reason is because the RMS is sort of the, I don't want to use the word average because mathematically that's something different, but let's just go with it. <laughs> it's the root mean square slash non-mathematical average of your crazy waveform because the voltage is a nice pure sine wave, right? But if your load has like capacitance or inductance, the current waveform is very often, first of all, it's phase shifted. And second of all, it's this squirrely thing that it's, it's still cyclical. It kind of still goes up and down, but it can be like very jagged and stuff. So how do you actually do a simple calculation like P equals VI? Well, you take the RMS value of the voltage and the RMS value of the current, which gives you the equivalent voltage or current if you were just dealing with DC. And by doing that, you can just, you can still say P equals VI and boom, you can calculate stuff. A practical example would be like uh, a washing machine. Okay, so like you have, uh, you have a European washing machine and it heats its own water, right? So you only have a cold water input, there's an electric heating element inside, so your washing machine on the nameplate of it, it's going to say like uh, 230 volts AC, and it will say 2300 watts. Okay, now this, this volt AC, that's actually an RMS value. And the power, it's watts, which means we're talking about real power here, not apparent power. So well, hang on a minute, can't you just say, let's just take 2300 watts and divide by 230 volts and you get 10 amps. Well, you're done, right? Mm, sort of, not really. Because as I mentioned, P equals VRMS times IRMS. When you're dealing with AC, this power is actually apparent power. Now, you may recall from my video on uh, power factor, I didn't actually mention this because I try not to get into too much techie detail. I try to keep it kind of simple. Uh, I think I'm probably failing miserably in this video, but this stuff is complicated, so what are you going to do? <laughs> so, apparent power, it has to do with power factor. And if you remember, power factor is equal to the real power in a circuit divided by the apparent power, and we can draw a power triangle where this is sort of like imaginary power and this is real power. And the way that it works is here you have a blue arrow. This is real power given in watts. And this is reactive power given in VAR and this is apparent power given in oh, VA and of course there's an angle phi here blah 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 you know this is basically like a little vector diagram and the thing to remember here about power factor is that the Basically, real power, this value up top, that's what your gizmo is actually consuming to do stuff, like make your laundry spin, right? The apparent power, or this red line, is that's like the, the amount of real power plus the, uh, the losses, the extra current that the power company, the extra juice they're having to send you because of losses, let's call them, due to capacitance and inductive in the circuit. Right. So... There you have it. Um, the thing is, now we get into like, you notice here, P real, real power is watts. Reactive power is volt amps reactive, and apparent power is VA. But if we're doing calculations for AC, as we said, we have apparent power is equal to volts RMS times amps RMS. But for AC, what you're actually getting is the apparent power. You're getting this red line which is both the juice that your gizmo is actually consuming plus the added juice that the power company is having to send. Now keep in mind that that added juice that the power company is having to send, that's still going through your, your meter, even though it's not measuring it. It's still going through all your circuit breakers and yada, yada, yada. So back to our example of the washing machine here, you have 230 volts AC. It consumes 2300 watts. 
notice it does not say VA. If this actual apparent power, volts RMS times current RMS, actually gives you VA. So in that case, if we see that, 230 volts AC, 2300 VA, that's an apparent power. That's including the power company's losses, let's say. But if you see watts, that's real power. Usually, this is the way engineers do it. But when you're looking at like nameplates to machines and stuff, it gets a little complicated because it depends on do you see 2300 watts or do you see 2300 VA. If you see watts, that's referring to the real power, the power that you are actually being billed for, the power that your gizmo is consuming to do work. If you see 2300 VA, then that's this apparent power here, and the actual real power that your gizmo is, is using to do work is going to be less than 2300. Okay, that was a little bit nuts. But the bottom line here is that if you use volts RMS and current RMS, VRMS, IRMS, you can multiply the two together and you get a power. Even though that is actually apparent power, not real power as it is with a DC circuit, it gives you kind of a general idea and it allows you, by everyone using these standard RMS values for current and voltage, it allows everyone to sort of, it's kind of like the standard by which we can, we can simply calculate power and just kind of get on with our lives. And if you want to consider all the hairy details, like uh, VRMS times IRMS is actually apparent power and draw your little power triangle and figure out all this nonsense. If you want to consider like, you know, does the nameplate of your gizmo specify like maximum nominal current and maximum rated current and like all these other things, you can do that if you want and you can pull all your hair out. Or you can just basically say, okay, as a general rule of thumb, I've got a power and I've got a voltage so I can just calculate the current kind of quick and dirty and go, okay, yeah, my circuit breaker is not going to trip. And finally, watts is not the same as VA. Uh, in engineering, watts is real power and VA is apparent power. And VAR or VAR is reactive power. So it gets complicated. Hopefully that was uh, not terribly confusing uh, because it is a confusing subject, like really confusing. So uh, anyway, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. And for more Techie Tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.